This is a Mark 7 GTI. And this is a Gen 3 engine. And this is a camshaft from a Gen 3 engine, and they seem to be having some problems. Engines function with a series of explosion, which keep your crankshaft and your engine turning. To keep your engine functioning properly, the top and bottom of your engine have to turn together, which are held together by a timing chain or a timing belt. Think of it like synchronized swimming, but if something goes wrong, it puts an $8,000 hole in your wallet and ruins your Christmas morning. <laughs> On the top of your engine, you have a camshaft and that opens and closes the valves in your engine as it turns. But many cars can make small adjustments as to when the valves are opening and closing, which is called variable cam timing. This is done to maximize performance and efficiency in your car, which vary depending on the circumstances and driving conditions you're currently in. Having your valves open sooner is called timing advance and having your valves open later is called retarding timing. Having your timing at full advance gives you more low end torque, while retarding your timing will give you more high-end horsepower at the top end. Having that adjustability allows you the best of both worlds, and that is why most manufacturers are adding them to cars today. This is a cam chassis out of a Mark 7 GTI, and at the end is known as the cam phaser or adjuster. This is how your car controls variable valve timing. So if there are no wires attached, how does this actually adjust the timing in your engine? With oil. Inside this cam adjuster, there are passages that direct different places that the oil can flow. This allows the oil pressure to advance or retard the timing whenever it needs to. Assuming you keep the oil topped up the way it needs to be. The way this variable valve timing is controlled is via these electromagnets located in your upper timing cover. I'm gonna pop this magnet out so we can take a look inside. An electric signal from the ECM is going to energize this magnet which moves the plunger inside this spool valve controlling the oil and directing it where it needs to go. Assuming that your car has any oil in it, the failure of this camshaft and spool valve is not something I would consider to be a common problem, but it is becoming more frequent. This camshaft came out of a customer's car that was at our shop, which was a Mark 7 GTI with a two liter turbo Gen 3 engine. This car was in great shape and was very well maintained, but the majority of camshaft failures we see come out of 1.8 T Gen 3 engines because they never have any oil in them. Diagnosing this issue fortunately isn't terribly difficult, but the symptoms can start with noises like this one. If that noise is coming from your upper timing cover, you can try unplugging your cam magnet and see if the noise changes like this. I'm struggling with one finger and I'm plugging it. As you can see, the noise is completely gone. Also, if you hear that noise coming from your engine, please, for the love of God, make sure your engine has oil in it. Now I'm gonna show you how to check if this is your problem. To diagnose this issue, we're gonna start by looking at our scan tool. So we're gonna look in our engine to look for faults. This particular vehicle has these faults. It may vary by vehicle. Fuel level too low, cylinder one misfire, cylinder three misfire, cylinder two misfire, cylinder four misfire, random misfires. And then the main key ones are crankshaft position, camshaft position, correlation, and camshaft position sensor circuit range performance. And cold start A, camshaft position timing over advanced. We're gonna be going into the live data section in OBD11. If you're using a VAGCOM, it's gonna be similar. It's going to be something like advanced diagnostic or advanced measuring blocks. We're gonna go into live data and we're gonna type in camshaft. Camshaft adjustment value intake bank one specified value and then we're gonna show actual value. If we look here on screen, it's gonna show you that the specified value is 10, which means the specified value that the car is trying to reach is 10. Now, if you look at the actual value, you can see that this value is hunting all over the place. We're gonna show you the exhaust cam and then the intake cam together, the actual and specified values. So you can see that the exhaust cam is not hunting all over the place and the intake cam is. The exhaust cam has a specified value of nine. The actual value is hovering around nine. It's not pinpointing at nine, but it's staying close to nine. It's 8.2, 8.4, 8.7, 9, 9.3, and then goes back down. The intake cam specified value is 10, and it is going from 19 to five, to six, to 12, to 14, to 17, to 19. That is how we know we definitely have an issue with our intake camshaft, and the only way to resolve that is to replace it. You can also see a loss in drivability and performance of your car which will either be sporadic or it could happen all the time. Most likely this would build from being less frequent to more frequent over time. 
If you want a fancy schmancy OBD11 tool just like that one, head over to shopdap.com where you can buy one. We'll link to them in the description as well as our website where you can buy Volkswagen and Audi parts. So to reiterate how this cam adjuster works, we take this cover off, you can see that this passage is where the oil flows here or there. And as we rotate it, you can see that it'll lose forward or backward depending on its location. You can see there are seals on each one of these corners to separate these places to allow it to build pressure. On the front side, you have this spring and plunger right here, and you can see that goes into this channel right here. On the back side, that has this detent pin which pushes out and locks the cam in the retard position and goes into this detent position right here. So as we slide this off, see all of our seals here that are coming out and they have kind of a tension spring on them. So if we look at the inside of this camshaft, you can see there are holes that funnel the oil through the hollow camshaft and actually go up into these holes here. So if we look, there is a hole here and a hole there. And that is how this adjusts. So you can see it would slide if it creates pressure on the back side. And now you create pressure on this side and it would go back this direction. And so it moves the oil like that to allow it to flow one direction or the other, which is why it does this. See how that might make a lot of noise if it wasn't any oil in there? So the way I think this car failed and the reason why we saw the numbers hunting all over the place is because as that cam adjuster is trying to adjust, the oil is leaking past the seals on the outer edges. That's causing it to move one direction and then it can't adjust properly so it falls backwards. That is why this thing is hunting back and forth. Seals are leaking, thing can't hold pressure, gotta replace the cam. So diagnosing this issue is easy, but replacing the camshaft is not. But we are gonna show you actually replacing it because Duncan at our shop replaced this one and Nathan sat there and recorded him doing it. We're gonna start under the hood of our car. We're gonna remove our battery and our intake. Next up, we're gonna remove the high pressure fuel pump and the vacuum pump, which is located on the side of the cylinder head. Next up, we're gonna remove the ignition coils and the harness that connects to the ignition coils and the other components on the valve cover. Now we're gonna remove the PCV valve and the pipes that go to it. Now we're gonna go on the bottom side of the car. We're gonna get the belly pan down. We're gonna get our passenger side fender liner removed so we can access our lower timing cover. This will give us access to our lower timing chain tensioner, which we need to put a pin in later. Make sure to support your engine with either a floor jack or you can have a engine brace on top. Then we're gonna remove our engine mount on the passenger side and the engine mount bracket. Next, we're gonna remove our cam magnet and the upper timing cover. Now our cam bridge comes off and we're gonna mark our timing chains on both upper cams. Then we can take this special tool and insert it into the engine. This allows us to detension that lower tensioner and put a pin inside. You will have to walk back the safety pin with a pair of pliers and then put that pin into the timing chain tensioner. This will detension your timing chain and allow you to remove the cam bridge without an issue. If you do not use that tool, you will have to take the lower timing cover off and kind of reset base timing for the entire engine before doing this type of job. You can buy on our website, shopdap.com. Once Duncan removes the old camshaft, he's gonna slide the new one in and hold tension on that chain the entire time, making sure that it doesn't fall off the lower crank. If you do, you could allow your engine to jump time. So this is why it's for professionals. Now you will have to clean all the sealant off the cam cage as well as the cylinder head to make sure you can get a good seal later. Now we're gonna reapply all of our sealant to our cam cage and then reinstall it onto our engine. When installing the cam cage, you are gonna to wanna to replace all the bolts and then follow the proper tightening procedure for doing said install. So that seemed pretty easy, right? Uh, if you need one of these, we can help you with a camshaft and the components to replace with it. The bad news about this situation is these spool valves there are updated ones, and if you need one of these because your spool valve went bad, you can't put it in the old camshaft because the new part number doesn't fit the old camshaft, so you have to buy a camshaft to go with your new spool valve, which means you have to do everything you just saw. We have the timing tools if you need them, shopdap.com, I'll link to them below. Uh, and uh, this is not really a great DIY. It's a difficult DIY, and I would consider this to be advanced. Also, check your oil.